Medical Surgical Nursing, Questions 61 to 80. 61. The nurse teaches a patient recovering from a total hip replacement that it is important to avoid. A. Putting a pillow between the legs while sleeping. B. Sitting with the legs crossed. C. Abduction exercises of the affected leg. D. Bearing weight exercises on the affected leg for six weeks. The answer is B. Sitting with the legs crossed. 62. A patient with duodenal peptic ulcer would describe his pain as a generalized burning sensation. B. Intermittent colicky pain. C. Gnawing sensation relieved by food. D. Colicky pain intensified by food. The answer is C. Gnawing sensation relieved by food. 63. A nurse prepares a narcotic analgesic for administration, but the patient refuses to take it. Which of the following actions by the nurse is most appropriate? A. Encourage the patient to reconsider taking the medication. B. Label the medication and replace it for use at a later time. C. Discard the medication in the presence of a witness and chart the action. D. Call the physician with the patient's refusal to take the prescribed medication. The answer is C. Discard the medication in the presence of a witness and chart the action. 64. Which of the following laboratory blood values is expected to be decreased in hepatic dysfunction? A. Albumin. B. Bilirubin. C. Ammonia. D. Alt and AST. The answer is A. Albumin. 65. A patient with allergic rhinitis reports severe nasal congestion, sneezing, and watery eyes at various times of the year. To teach the patient to control these symptoms, the nurse advises the patient to avoid all over-the-counter intranasal sprays. Limit the use of nasal decongestant sprays to 10 days. Use oral decongestants at bedtime to prevent symptoms during the night. Keep a diary of when an allergic reaction occurs and what precipitates it. The answer is D. Keep a diary of when an allergic reaction occurs and what precipitates it. 66. The nurse notes that there are no physician's orders regarding Fatima's postoperative daily insulin dose. The most appropriate action by the nurse is to withhold any insulin dose since none is ordered and the patient is NPO. Call the physician to clarify whether insulin should be given and at what dose. Give half the usual daily insulin dose since she will not be eating in the morning. Give the patient her usual daily insulin dose since the stress of surgery will increase her blood glucose. The answer is B. Call the physician to clarify whether insulin should be given and at what dose. 67. An 8-month-old infant is diagnosed with communicating hydrocephalus. The nurse notices that his intracranial pressure is increasing from the following changes in his vital signs. A. Bradycardia, hypotension, and hypothermia. B. Bradycardia, hypertension, and hyperthermia. C. Tachycardia, hypotension, and hyperthermia. D. Tachycardia, hypertension, and hypothermia. The answer is B. Bradycardia, hypertension, and hyperthermia. 68. Whenever a child with thalassemia comes for blood transfusion, he is administered desferoxamine, desferol. The action of this drug is to a. Inhibit the inflammatory process. b. Enhance iron excretion. c. Antagonize the effect of vitamin C. d. Increase red blood cell production. The answer is b. Enhance iron excretion. 69. A patient becomes angry and threatens to leave the hospital unless the physician reviews the reason for the patient's delay in discharge. The patient has a medication order for agitation available p.m., but refuses the medication and requests a drink of orange juice instead. What should the nurse do? Secretly slip the PRN medication into the orange juice and give it to the patient. Give the patient the orange juice and tell the patient that a staff member is attempting to call the physician. Inform the patient that staff is unable to force anyone to stay in the hospital. Inform the patient that nothing can be done until the morning. The answer is B. 
Give the patient the orange juice and tell the patient that a staff member is attempting to call the physician. 70. A nurse prepares to set up a secondary intravenous, 4. Cannula. The primary for infusing is normal saline. In order for the secondary cannula to infuse correctly, the nurse should set up the primary for to a. Hang higher than the secondary for b. Hang at the same level as the secondary for c. Hang lower than the secondary for d. Discontinue before the secondary for starts. The answer is C. Hang lower than the secondary four. 71. A 21-year-old woman is being treated for injuries sustained in a car accident. The patient has a central venous pressure, CVP, line in situ. The nurse recognizes that CVP measurements. A. Estimate cardiac output. B. Assess myocardial workload. C. Determine need for fluid replacement. D. Determine ventilation, perfusion mismatch. The answer is C. Determine need for fluid replacement. 72. After application of a cast in the upper extremity, the patient complains of severe pain in the affected site. Which of the following would the nurse initiate? A. Administer analgesics as ordered. B. Assess neurovascular status. C. Notify his physician. D. Pad the edges of the cast. The answer is B. Assess neurovascular status. 73. The best dietary advice a nurse can give to a woman diagnosed with mild pregnancy induced hypertension is to A. Follow a strict low salt diet. B. Restrict fluid intake. C. Increase protein intake. D. Maintain a well balanced diet. The answer is D. Maintain a well balanced diet. 74. The patient's preoperative blood pressure was 120-68 mmHg. On admission to the post-anesthesia care unit, the blood pressure was 124-70 mmHg. 30 minutes after admission, the patient's blood pressure falls to 112-60 mmHg, pulse to 72 bpm, and the skin appears warm and dry. The most appropriate action by the nurse at this time is to a. Raise the head of the bed. B. Notify the anesthetist immediately. C. Increase the rate of four fluid replacement. D. Continue to monitor the patient. The answer is D. Continue to monitor the patient. 75. An 84-year-old man has arthritis and is admitted for a severely edematous knee. The physician orders heat packs every two hours, and you feel this order may worsen the tissue congestion. An appropriate nursing action would be Contact the physician and discuss your concerns about the order. To include the order in the nursing care plan and monitor outcome. Complete an incident report form and document concerns in the nursing notes. Involve the patient by asking what his treatment preference. The answer is A. Contact the physician and discuss your concerns about the order. 76. The nurse plans the care for a patient with increased intracranial pressure. She knows that the best way to position the patient is to a. Keep patient in a supine position until stable. b. Elevate the head of the bed to 30 degrees. c. Maintain patient on right side with head supported on a pillow. d. Keep patient in a semi-sitting position. The answer is b. Elevate the head of the bed to 30 degrees. 77. The coronary care nurse draws an arterial blood gas, ABG, sample to assess a patient for acidosis. A normal pH for arterial blood is A. 7.0 to 7.24 B. 7.25 to 7.34 C. 7.35 to 7.45 D. 7.5 to 7.6 the answer is C, 7.35 to 7.45. 78. A patient voided a urine specimen at 9 a.m. The specimen should be sent to the laboratory before A, 9.30 a.m. B, 10 a.m. C, 10.30 a.m. D, 11 a.m. The answer is at 9.30 a.m. 
79. Which of the following correctly describes wound packing in a wet to dry dressing? A. a pack gauze into the wound tightly. B. Overlap the wound edges with wet packing. C. Pack the wound with slightly moistened gauze. D. Use gauze well saturated with saline for packing the wound. The answer is C. Pack the wound with slightly moistened gauze. 80. To prevent postoperative thrombophlebitis, which one of the following measures is effective? A. Elevation of the leg on two pillows. B. Using of compression stocking at night. C. Massage the calf muscle frequently. D. Performing leg exercises. The answer is D. Performing leg exercises.